The thought that probably comes to mind when thinking of extinct animals and entering a world from eons ago is the feeling of terror you might experience upon encountering these creatures. Even when looking exclusively at the late Cretaceous, many horrifying animals such as many non-avian dinosaurs, pterosaurs, marine reptiles and crocodilians come to mind. Despite this, there are some extinct animals that are much scarier than people think and should definitely appear in more horror stories about extinct animals in some way, shape or form. This video is aiming to explain why if you're a time traveller, you should absolutely avoid the late Cretaceous, as at this time, across planet Earth, there were monsters. Some of these nightmares would eat you for breakfast before the first sunset. The late Cretaceous in this video is defined as the Maastrichtian and Campanian stages, so not technically the formal definitions. If you'd like to see me explore more time periods in the future, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. The first group of utter nightmares from the late Cretaceous are what I call the Grim Reaper Giraffes. Scientifically, these flying reptiles are as darker pterosaurs which are a family of pterosaurs from the late Cretaceous, which managed to conquer most of the world's land area by the Maastrichtian stage 70 million years ago. Now, not all Asdarkids were gigantic, just look at the wandering albatross-sized Eurasdarko from Romania. In spite of this, most Asdarkids from the late Cretaceous were giants of the sky. There were multiple genera of Asdarkids from across the planet, including Quetzalcoatlus from Texas, Cryodraken from Canada, Aramborgiania from Jordan, Hatsigopteryx from Romania, and Thanatostrican from Argentina. These titans had wingspans of between 9 and 12 metres, reaching heights comparable to a fully grown giraffe at 5 metres. The beak of Quetzalcoatlus alone was over two and a half metres in length, which is far longer than the average human. If these giant pterosaurs couldn't swallow a person whole, it's possible that they'd turn you into a kebab, impaling you like a massive spear. Keep in mind, if one was stalking you, it'd be from the air, out of sight. By the way, their appearance gets even worse from the front, just in case you're wondering. My advice to anyone with a time machine is stay out of late Cretaceous Texas, Romania, Jordan or Argentina unless you want to meet the Grim Reaper. Cows might not seem like scary animals, but they actually kill far more people than bears, sharks and wolves combined every year. Spanish bullfighting and people underestimating the power of their legs make up essentially the entirety of that body count. Now, imagine a cow twice the size of an African elephant with a beak able to cut right through you. Actually, you don't have to imagine this behemoth as it once existed. Meet the Sauralophinae, which is a subfamily of hadrosaurids containing some of the largest non-sauropod land animals to ever exist. This family contains giants like Shantungasaurus, Edmontosaurus, Barsbolia, and Saurolophus, to name some of the largest. Shantungasaurus could reach lengths of up to 17 metres and weights of 18 tonnes, three times the size of an Asian elephant and double the weight of a T-Rex. The other three genera were also gigantic at well over 10 tonnes each. People often underestimate how deadly hadrosaurs were, as they don't have any spikes or tail clubs of other herbivorous dinosaurs. Instead, they make up for these with sheer mass and an insane kicking potential from the back and sides. Imagine a horse kicking you and now multiply the impact by a hundred. It's unlikely that Shantungasaurus had any natural predators as an adult, and Edmontosaurus would have been one tough cookie for T-Rex to handle. A person? You're just a joke to these kaiju. The worst part is that they lived across the late Cretaceous, with Shantungasaurus living 83 to 74 million years ago, and the other three genera living right afterwards, up until 66 million years ago. 
they are yet another reason to avoid mass strictly in North America. In order to find the Maastrichtians' next sleep paralysis demon, you'd need to travel to Mongolia, specifically the Namekt Formation. 70 million years ago, this region was a lush environment with swamplands, marshlands and forests. Living in this environment were some incredibly strange and sometimes dangerous animals. This is Therizinosaurus chaloniformis, the scythe lizard. The most iconic bit of anatomy associated with the Maastrichtian version of Freddy Krueger are its one metre claws, which were sickle shaped. The exact purpose of these claws is unknown, with various theories regarding their use being put forward. Some believe they were for foraging, interspecific combat, defence or simply a sexual display. One thing is for certain though, you wouldn't want to mess with the owner of those claws. Therizinosaurus may have approached 5 tons when fully grown, which is the size of a large Asian elephant. It also had a long neck, and its posture was distinct from other theropods, being slightly more uncanny. They would have been even more eerie to come across at night. It's a hybrid between a ground sloth, a turkey, and the antagonist from A Night on Elm Street. Some of the most iconic predatory theropod dinosaurs from the late Cretaceous are the Tyrannosaurids, especially Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus. Thanks to their charisma, other theropods don't receive the spotlight as often. A notable example of animals that should be far more well known but aren't are the Megaraptorans. This is a clade of non-avian theropods believed to be related to Tyrannosaurids being Tyrannosauroids themselves. Though Megaraptor itself died out before the Campanium, other much larger genera lived right up until the KPG extinction. Mype Macrothorax is the largest Megaraptorum and one of the largest theropods period. Discovered as recently as 2019 and described in 2022, it had a length of 10 meters and a weight in excess of three tons. Like other Megaraptors, Mype had enormous arms and massive 14 inch claws. I swear this is just a smaller Indominus Rex. Other genera that lived in the Campanian and early Maastrichtian include Orcaraptor and Erostian. All of these Megaraptorans lived in Argentina, though some Megaraptorans have also been found in Australia, but they lived much further back than the late Cretaceous, going extinct in the middle Cretaceous. Clearly the land of Maastrichtian Earth was a paradise for both the surrealist aliens and the horrific monstrosities that are extinct archosauriforms. The skies weren't much better, yet no matter how dangerous things get on land, never go into the water. Mosasauridae is the family containing some famous genera such as Mosasaurus and Tylosaurus, but also some more obscure relatives such as Prognathodon and Globodens. Mosasaurus hoffmani, the largest species, could grow to lengths of between 14 and 17 metres, weighing up to 15 tonnes. While smaller genera did exist in the past, with Dallasaurus, Halosaurus, and Clydestes, all of the largest genera lived at the same time, right at the end of the Cretaceous. This means the ocean was filled with orca to humpback-sized leviathans, ready to swallow a person whole. An even more frightening fact about these creatures would be their insane acceleration through the water. As in short bursts of speed, it's believed that Mosasaurus could travel at 14 metres per second, which is more than 48 kilometres per hour. This is literally miles faster than the record speed for a human, which is only 8.93 kilometres per hour. They likely hunted smaller prey, including ammonites, plesiosaurs, large turtles, and sharks to name a few. Mosasaurus have even been found with evidence of interspecific combat, so they might not have even been safe from each other. The takeaway? 
Stay away from Lake Cretaceous oceans, especially North America, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Indonesia, South America and New Zealand. Before I conclude this episode, here are some honourable mentions for animals from the Lake Cretaceous that would have appeared in your worst nightmares. Large ceratopsians, including Triceratops and Taurosaurus from Hell Creek, are elephant-sized murder cattle, which had three horns, one on their nose and two on their frill. They don't get their own section because most of what I can say about them, I said in the hadrosaur section. Herbivores aren't cute and can be really dangerous, even in real modern-day settings. Juveniles of Megatheropods, Tyrannosaurus, Tarbosaurus and Zhujiang Tyrannus included, would be far more dangerous than their parents. The same can be said for the Tyrannosaurids, Chansosaurus and Alioramus from China and Mongolia. These much leaner and sleeker species could easily run down smaller, medium-sized prey such as Pachycephalosaurus, Ornithomimids and larger Ovaraptorosaurs they would make quick work of a person. By the way, I didn't include the actual adult megatheropods such as Tyrannosaurus rex for a reason. While I wouldn't want to encounter one in the woods at night, no shot, they likely wouldn't actively terrorize time travelers. To them, we're too small to be worth the energy chasing down. This concludes the video. If you liked the content, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to see more like this. What other time periods do you want to see me explore? The Late Pleistocene? The Eocene? The Middle Cretaceous? The Jurassic? Let me know in the comments below.